Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about adding a copper plate to one of my Asus 3080 Ti LHR Strix GPUs. These GPUs by Asus, the ones I have, all run very hot memory temps. Not as much as the tough gaming version of the Asus 3080 Ti's, but the Strix do get up close to 100 Celsius in the memory temps. So I said, I'm going to get one of these from Cool My GPU. I'm not affiliated. I don't work for them. It's not an ad. I just said, I'm going to use it. These guys, I think, have a laser cutter, and they cut out these copper uh, plates, these templates, and they fit right in. They have all the, uh, uh, all the little offsets in that to make it seat nicely to cover the GPU memory, which is uh, the Texas Instrument chips you'll see as we uh, start ripping this board apart. Yeah, so the problem is I've been running these cards. They've always had high memories. And the uh, the thermal pads and replacing the pace and thermal pads just does not do it. It doesn't work. Don't waste your money on thermal pads. They're expensive, and it's not going to get you any results with a 3070 Ti, a 3080 Ti. I'm telling you, copper has better heat, uh, what do you call it, kind of, connectivity or just uh, dissipates heat or handles it better than anything else and you're going to pay for these these are like 60 bucks i got one for the 3070 ti and it worked magic dropped the uh, memory temps by 40 degrees celsius now the thing runs in the high 60s down from 110 celsius on the memory temps this card here right before i shut it down and pulled it out of the rig uh, recorded about 102, 100 degrees Celsius, mining Ethereum on Ethermine using G Miner software. So I said, hey, I just got this in. I'll make a quick video. This time I'll double speed it and I'll uh, just slap this thing together. It's uh, highly boring, but anybody can do this. These are expensive cards, so don't be afraid to take them apart. Just take your time, put the screws where they go on the card like I am doing here. I put them in the same location they would go when I put them back. It makes it so much easier than just throwing everything in a pile. So um, that's how I do it. Yeah, so these cards run hot. I want to get them all down. I just decided I'd get one of these templates from Cool My GPU just to see if it actually would work on a 3080 Ti because those damn cards run really hot, like I said. And I think it affects performance. Uh, and I know on the one Asus 3080 Ti, it gets over 106, and then I start getting the uh, TDR windows uh, TDR errors when uh, running hot, and it causes the windows to crash, and even Linux will crash if I'm running Hive OS with that card. So those they don't have a copper plate for them. So I'm just gonna add my own. I'm gonna cut out the shims myself, use thermal paste, put them on, and put that card in there. It's it's GPU zero, and I can't wait to get those. I should get that copper sheet tomorrow. It's uh, 0.06 inches thick. This guy's shim is about 0 0.05, 0 0.06 uh, on the calipers. So uh, that gives you a rough idea of what, what thickness to get. So I did order a sheet of 1. Point, God, I forget. 1.06 millimeters, which is 0 0.06 inches. So something like that. So 0 0.05 to 0 0.06 should do you well if you can find it because copper ain't cheap. But a little cheaper than buying the template. But again, these guys are using a laser or something or a, a tool to cut it out nicely. And uh, they, they did a great job. You just plop it right over the uh, NVIDIA chip and uh, add paste to both sides and you are done. Hardest part is cleaning out the old crap. You'll see in a minute. So here I am taking this thing apart. And this is the first 3080 Ti Strix model I took apart. So there was uh, two cables. I let the LED... Cable plugged in, and I pulled the other one off. Uh, that's the tricky part. That's probably the hardest part of this whole exercise. So here I go. I'm just trying to save the existing thermal pads, and I'm putting them on the metal template sheet that came with the uh, copper plate. Here I am just eyeing it up, make sure it's the right one, make sure it is uh, cut out so it covers all the memory chips. And amazing that a something like this is such a huge win. 
You'd think NVIDIA or whoever, Asus, whoever makes these things, would just make it an upgrade or just put these things in there and charge accordingly. I think, well, <clears throat> you know why they do it. It's like lawnmowers, refrigerators, HVACs, stuff like that. They want the things to break over time, so you buy more. If you make something that lasts a long time, uh, you're not going to buy more. So it's going to hurt your business in the long run. So that's probably why they don't do the uh, 100% thermal handling uh, solution, whatever. So here I'm just going to clean this crap off, the existing crap. And if you notice, this is the thermal paste on the heat sink and the chip. They didn't put much on there. Uh, it was barely covering it. I mean, there's bare spots in that, and you're supposed to cover the whole surface area of the CPU. Uh, and it shouldn't, I don't know. It just seems like they just use a little bit, and then they move on. Qu call to control question here. Uh, here I am putting the uh, thermal pads. Well, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm just playing around right now. I'm getting thermal paste everywhere, probably. That stuff gets on you, man. You've got to be careful. Have a, have a shop rag and keep that stuff. Otherwise, once you start touching everything else, you'll get thermal paste on it, little fingerprints on that. Uh, rubbing alcohol helps. All right, just sit back. It's going to be boring. Uh, just basically clean, clean, clean. And uh, we'll, we'll install some new MX4 thermal paste. I know another guy, a uh, very helpful channel, did thermal putty uh, I couldn't find it they stopped making the putty and that seemed like an awesome solution but the paste works it may dry out over time but again I needed something to get those damn temperatures down uh, on these what $1,600 GPUs you know I don't mind spending 60 bucks but again I'll spend it on this one the rest I am going to try to DIY it myself uh, with the copper sheet I have um, the Kapton tape K-A-P-T-O-N and now I'm going to put that down to cover the resistors and stuff around the chip so the uh, copper doesn't touch it and short anything out. Uh, this template is nice. You're paying, for, you're paying for a premium, but they give you the template here. So when you put it over the, CP, uh, the NVIDIA chip, it won't move. It's perfectly positioned, and you're good to go. Uh, yeah, but these, when I do the shims, i got to make sure they stay in place when I piece this thing back together so they don't move. That'll be another video. And I'm looking forward to that because the Asus models don't have templates. Uh, cool, my GPU is still working on one, but I need to get uh, one of those cards down because it just gets hot. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't want it to burn out the card. Who would have thought getting into this stupid crypto mining that I'd be dealing with freaking uh, ripping GPUs apart and uh, replacing thermal, thermal issues, uh, replacing with thermal copper plates and stuff. I never saw this coming. And you get damn good at it. You can strip these cards down. Again, this is my... First uh, 30 ATI Strix, uh, Strix model, so every card is different. This was actually quite easy, as you saw with all the screws. It was pretty well easy, uh, laid out, and uh, took it right apart, popped right apart too. Hardest part was that damn cable, but yeah, take your time. Don't rip it apart and rip the thing out. But always take your time. Yeah, that's about it, man. So here we go. I know other people are putting copper on, and it's just funny. I don't know how I found about this on Discord. I know some people hate Discords, but you go into right groups for the uh, mining software like T-Rex, MB Miner, G Miner, whatever. You will find people. I think it was the T-Rex Discord. People say copper. Oh, what's this copper stuff? And then you, it's like a uh, rabbit hole. You start working your way down this rabbit hole. You look into it. And you find out, oh, there's uh, cool my GPU. All right, that helps. Then you go, wow, this gets expensive. So again, it works on my 3070 Ti Magic. It's gonna, it's gonna work on a 38 Ti. I know it is, uh, and it's so easy to do, and it's not messy or expensive. Like cutting out those damn thermal pads, those are a waste of money. So don't buy thermal pads, please don't. Especially on the ones around the memory, that goes around the Nvidia chip. This is where the um, copper plate's gonna go. Don't need to put crappy thermal pad replacement on it. Just get a copper plate, pay the money, or get your own shims out. You can get copper sheets 0.06 inches thick from Amazon. Uh, Home Depot, I think, actually has 0.05 inch. You can get online, and uh, it's around there, but make sure it is copper, not aluminum copper, aluminum copper color or something stupid like that. So yeah, well, second, second thought, don't go to Home Depot. But they have KNS makes it, and it's copper sheets. So look at me clean, yummy, yummy, yummy. This is all fun. This is chop rag, lint free, and isopropyl alcohol. Just get all much out of you can. Be careful of the little resistors. 
Uh, you know, this stuff can be fragile. You want to knock a resistor off, then you got to get your soldering skill uh, up to par and your flux and put that puppy back in spot. Uh, but then you got to worry about temperature and frying the board. It's a whole mess. So just be careful. I'm just trying to wipe as much dirt off. This car was this card was not that dirty. It didn't have dust bunnies or anything in it. So I'm really shocked at how clean this one has been running. And it did sit back in the corner of the grow tent. Maybe that's why it was getting hot. Who knows? But this one I identified had 100 degrees Celsius mem. And I said, let's just do this one real quick. Let's just put this video out real quick and swap it out. Yeah, the hardest part of this thing was just keep my damn hands clean, keeping the thermal paste off. Then I started to run out of thermal paste. I know I had new tubes, but I was using up my existing supply. So you'll see me swapping tubes, uh, trying to use as much as I can, because that stuff's not cheap. It's not expensive. It's like, like 12 bucks, I think, for a little tube. But uh, that adds up, too. You're trying to cut your costs down, especially with crypto mining. Mining Ethereum profitability is way down. Uh, you got to think efficient. You got to uh, tune in your uh, tune in your overclock so you are running efficient. And uh, the nice thing about some of these miners, most of them, they put a column out there for efficiency, watt to hash uh, ratio, and uh, try to tune that in. I know people want to squeeze out, you know, 11 on the dial to get as much hash rate. But if you're burning more power, you're going to be paying the power boy, the electric company, and you're not making any profits in. So sometimes say on this 3080 Ti and get 120 uh, mega hash on Ethereum with the new 100% LHR unlock. But is that wise if I'm burning 310 watts? I'd rather maybe tone it down to 115 and uh, burn maybe 280 watts. You know what I mean? And you can see how well you are tuning it in based on the efficiency column. Uh, just mainly the secret is the memory clock. Just start at a point where you're happy, but then start dialing down by 25. Let it sit, run it again. Okay, you're happy. All right, you're getting closer. Go 25 down on the memory clock. Just go 25 down. Uh, I will say this for NiceHash. They have an OC tune tool for tuning while the thing's running. And they have these steps of minus 10, minus 25. It's a great way to tune in stuff. Or you could use... um. Um, MSI Afterburner, if you just want to get close, instead of restarting and stopping the miner, but then you might be conflicting the MSI Afterburner with the running software like a T-Rex or G miner or MB miner. So, eh, careful on that one. There's the tube, MX4, baby. Yeah, when you order the... Uh, uh, copper plate from Cool My GPU. Good on this guy, man. Give this guy props for starting a little business, seeing a problem, finding a solution, and putting it out there. I mean, not bad. He's you know, charging a fair price. I charge more, but uh, yeah. And when you do order, just get the MX4 as get the MX4 tube as well. That way, you don't have to go order it separately on Amazon. Because I know when I order small stuff from Amazon. And it gets shipped USPS. The good old USPS will sometimes lose it or put it in someone else's mailbox because it's such a small package. I mean, that's why I'd rather get a bunch of stuff and get a bigger uh, shipment, a bigger delivery, then they hopefully won't lose it. Yeah, I don't, have my, I don't have much luck with my local USPS. They're like the Newmans, the Newmans of my neighborhood. But they don't care. They get a, light, they get a job for life. All right, we're just t dabbing and dabbing. You get good at this after a while using a little spatula. You get good putting that crap on. Secret is just keeping it off your fingers. So what's the goal here? What's the end game? First one, get the damn memory temps down. Right? Then hopefully that makes efficiency go up and I can mine, um, get more mega hash or tune it in better. Maybe get more hash rate. I'll have to play with that. Once I get the temps down, I'm happy that their cards aren't going to burn out. I know people are going to freak out. Well, you took off the warranty sticker because you unscrewed the uh, bottom. Who cares? I want the card to be cool. It's kind of not an uh, ideal product to begin with because they put something out there that's going to overheat or just burn hot. It's going to, even if you're playing a damn game, it's going to be hot. So, I mean, you want these things to run cool and they'll run better and probably performance will increase. So that's the end game right now is get the temps down. 
and hopefully get the performance and hashes up while not getting super hot. And this is one of six cards I've got to do. Yeah, the key ones, the problematic ones, are the Asus uh, uh, Tough Gaming 3080 Ti's. I can't wait to pop one of those things. Oh, I did pop one open. I did pop it open and I replaced the thermal paste. I gopped it on and I replaced the thermal pads with GP riser thermal pads. Thinking, oh, these are these must be the best thermal pads in history. Uh, no, it didn't really affect anything. There was no no noticeable difference. Uh, I just went, damn. Oh well, what a waste of money. You know, 40, 40 plus bucks on thermal pads and paste, and my time. It just was it was a zero result I wanted. So things still burn hot. So when I get the copper sheets, I will update. GPU Zero, which is a tough gaming 38 Ti. I'm going to do that puppy first because he gets 106, 108. I need to drop him down to the 70s. Yeah, because he's starting to hiccup a bit. I'm afraid I'm frying the board on it. All right, so let's just keep going. I don't know. I'm just adding paste. I'm going to stop now and I'll come back in when we get further. Just sit. You can fast forward through it. I already have a 2x speed. This is on an iPhone, so it doesn't go any faster. And that's the beauty of youtube you can just 1.5 4x this thing if you want just zip through you're not missing much uh, just applying the thermal paste and being very careful coming up that i get it all covered on the copper plate and i get the plug plug back in before i get this thing put back together and aligning the holes because i don't want to muck up the thermal paste i already added and have to reapply it because again the stuff ain't too cheap so just take your time and you can do it. Don't be afraid. It's just, you're going to spend a little money, but you're going to get results. Right? Right. All right, I'm going to stop it. Stop talking. I'll just sit back and watch for a bit.
Okay, if you made it this far, you're going to see me put this puppy back in to the rig, back into my X470A gaming motherboard. This is my Home Depot rack hanging with wire, wire wraps, wire straps, and uh, get this thing there's get this thing back up and running. All uh, 630 ATIs. Yeah, that's my uh, that's my workhorse right there, baby. Uh, let's go. So we'll put this back in. We'll boot it back up, and we'll show you some temperature readings in a second. All right, here we are. We have been running for a few minutes, and I just isolated this card by itself using G Miner, mining Ethereum to Ether mine, and I uh, just wanted to run this by itself, make sure nothing, you know, failed right off the bat. But it came right up, fan spun, no noise, no smoke, nothing. And look at that. What do you guys see? That was 72. Now here I'm running the whole six uh, 30 ATIs. You can see the bad ones that are hot, and you see that number three. 72 that was burning 98 99 100 degrees celsius now it's at 72 so i'm going to say it's a 30 degree in 30 degrees celsius drop by adding this copper plate so that is a win guys i'm just showing you right there that is a huge win and i got five to go all right thanks for watching